Hello everybody, welcome back to some more BD Armoury and welcome back to another aircraft tutorial. Um, today we're going to be taking a look at my attack helicopter, the Hawk Moth, and uh, just helicopters in general really. Ever since I uh, made this craft I've been wanting to uh, throw together a tutorial just to uh, just to take people through the design process just in case they wanted to do something similar but weren't sure where to get started and I've had a couple of requests for it as well so um, yeah I thought why not. Uh, now in this video we will be using parts from the Breaking Ground DLC although if you don't have that I'm sure there are mods out there with equivalent parts. Anyway, before we get building, I want to start by taking a look at an earlier attempt at an attack helicopter I made. So this is just a quick note really for anyone who's wondering why I didn't go for a more conventional rotor design um, with the Hawk Moth, basically a single rotor up top and the tail rotor. It's because designing this and getting the balance right is enough of a pain in the ass in real life, uh, let alone in KSP. For those of you who aren't aware of the mechanics of helicopters, I don't suppose that will be many people who watch this, uh, who watch these videos. But nonetheless, you've got the main rotor which will rotate like that. That induces a torque on the craft itself going in the other direction. To counter that, you have the tail rotor which will be trying to pull the aircraft, uh, the tail of the aircraft like that to, uh, to stop it rotating. But now the net force on the helicopter is in this direction, so you need to tilt the, uh, tilt the main rotor slightly to pull it in that direction. And yeah, it's not all linear and getting it to work, as I said, enough of a pain in the ass in real life. Um, I'm just going to fire this up and we'll see if we can uh, get flying. You can already see what's going on with this. Uh, right, there we go. So that's got that balanced. Just lift it off gently. It's almost behaving itself. Let's get the gear in. Yeah, this 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 is after many, many, many iterations and I still haven't managed to get it quite right. This is why I went for the coaxial rotor design in the end. Uh, I mean, fair play to you if you can get this to work. I mean, there are some uh, specialist uh, specialist helicopter engines out there which I haven't uh, tried to see how well they work. Um, but yeah, I just decided I'd go with the uh, with the well, not stock parts, the uh, breaking ground DLC parts, and see how well I could get that to work. Yeah, having to make constant control inputs just to get this thing uh, get this thing fly flying properly and pulling any kind of maneuvers is just yeah, it all gets ridiculous. Anyway, let's um let's go and see if we can recreate the uh, the current model of my Hawk Moth. Let's get started then. Uh, we're going to keep it pretty basic. The uh, the Hawk Moth is uh, a relatively simple craft. I definitely went for function over form. We just go for a a Mark One inline cockpit. Uh, let's go to the BD Armory section because I also use the air to ground radon. Not used a lot in this uh, current version of BD Armory, but. With the whole load of stuff that's currently in development, uh, I'd imagine that's going to come into its own uh, sooner rather than later. Switching to structural parts somewhere in here will be... Oh god, I've got so many mods. <laughs> I need to have a clear out because it's definitely clogging things when I try to uh, try to find stuff. Uh, yes, structural fuselage there. Stick that on the back and also go for, is it aerodynamics or structural? So here they are hiding away in the aerodynamics section. So we're just going to get the type B and attach that to the back. So that's the basic fuselage of the craft. We're not going to spend too long doing this because, you know, the, the meat of this video is going to be in exploring sort of like the aero, uh, the aero, well, not the aerodynamics, the... Um, the engines and how we get it to fly and I'm going to want that on symmetry do, do, do. maybe spread the wheels out a little bit further yep that looks good grab another one of those stick you on the back somewhere about there turn off symmetry Okay, that's looking good. So, as I said, that's the basic fuselage, and now we can get it to roll around the ground without that horrible scraping noise you sometimes get. Uh, moving on. So next up we're going to need some wing surfaces. Uh, first of all, I'm just going to stick on a couple of these, the, uh, the Type E connectors, just about there, just to serve as winglets, somewhere to put our weapons. Um, Tailplane. Now, the uh, helicopter does require a little bit of stability. Uh, I mean, it's 
it does go you know in all directions but mostly it will be going forward so you do need to keep a little bit of stability in there let's just turn uh, snapping off and we'll move you a bit further back uh, and of course we will want a tailplane of some description as well so turn that round it's always the last button I try and as we do want a little bit of control when we're flying forward just to keep this well keep this going forward I am just going to stick on some small elevons uh, just on the back here one there or two there and just another one here to act there we go as I said always the last button I try Okay, looking good. And um, we will adjust these uh, a little bit later once we start getting a better idea of what's going on with the uh, with the weight of this craft. Next up, we need to start thinking about our little helicopter systems. So first of all, something I should, probably should have done a little bit earlier. We're going to take this off, stick uh, stick a reaction wheel in there to help us control it. Uh, we're also going to want because this is an attack helicopter. Uh, do, 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 do. Uh, I mean, it doesn't. <laughs> the AI pilot doesn't do very well with this craft, but uh, let's stick you back there because there's going to be engine stuff going on there. So we're going to want autopilot. As I said, autopilot, not that crucial, but the weapon manager definitely will be. Uh, we're going to require some stuff for the electronics. Um, we will need some fuel cells, so um, do, 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 do. let's just go for the traditional fuel cells. A uh, couple there, a uh, couple there. That should do us for. Let's just yeah. So we got a little array going on down the bottom there. That should do us for most flights. Uh, for something a bit more long endurance, I probably would have to stick another pair of these in. Um, also, because, yeah, battery life on these things is pretty terrible. We're just going to get a small battery. Could we get away with something like the Z400? Let's use one of those. Turn off the... Uh, do, 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 do. Turn off the symmetry and get that in there. Okay, starting to get somewhere now. We're nearly ready to start thinking about engines and fuel tanks and all that stuff, but with a helicopter it's crucial to get all that sort of placed when you already know where the uh, the centre of mass of the rest of the craft is. So there's a couple, couple more sort of uh, bits we'll need to attach just to make sure we don't have to... Um, start fiddling about with them later. Sort of things that won't be going necessarily through the centre of mass, so it'll be good to get them on there so we know sort of where that is going to be. Ground attack helicopter, so we will be targeting some uh, some ground targets. We uh, we'll want to get a little targeting ball here. And of course there's the old uh, M230, if I can actually press that. Are you going to search for me? Ah, oh, where are you? There it is. Um, okay. M2... Th I did search for that, didn't I? No idea why that didn't come up. Uh, we're just going to place one of you on the bottom there. Um, as well as that, then, we're going to want uh, to do some 30mm ammunition boxes. I'm just going to get a couple of these and do my normal trick with them. Um... Just in case I want to like take them off at any point, we uh, just put them attached to the cockpit section there. Grab our little move it tool and just clip them in there. That means I can access them if I want to. I can just take off this and uh, like so, and I have access to them if I want to take them out and swap them for anything else. Let's get you reattached there. Okay, I think we're ready to start thinking about sticking some engines on this. Oh, I have just remembered one last thing we do need to do. Uh, yeah, there is going to be some more weight on these wings. Let's just look at where the center of mass currently is. Uh, so yeah, this is going to affect sort of what we put on our wings. We're going to try and line these winglets up so 
Um, uh, so that whatever arm that we put on or off shouldn't actually move the center of mass about. But that requires a little bit of forward planning. Now, where are the little small hard points? There they are. I'm just going to flip this onto its side, and then we're going to want a pair of these just sort of here. I'm just going to try and line them up with the uh, the back of that white part of the wing surface. That just gives us sort of a reference point, and then another one uh, in there. And I just want to try and line the middle of these up with that center of mass. So if we grab this, I need to hold down shift, uh, about there looks good. Right, as I said, that's just to make sure that whatever I put on there shouldn't move the center of mass about. Um, although if there will be some more minor adjustments to uh, to um, do before we uh, before we finally get this thing armed and flying. So for our long-awaited engine, if you are using the uh, the Breaking Ground DLC parts, you will find them in robotics. So first of all, we are using the R seven thousand turbo shaft engine. I want to turn on snapping, turn off. Um, turn off symmetry and we want to turn you the other way around because I think that looks a little bit better. Let's bring up the uh, center of mass overlay. Let's bring up the move tool and we are just going to try and line those up as best we can. Ooh. Let's move you forward like that. Okay, so that's pretty much smack bang on there. We can do a little bit of uh, fiddling on a bit later, but, you know, if you get them all roughly in the right place, then it sort of minimizes that and makes sure the thing can fly pretty much straight out of the door. Uh, attach nodes double, that's what we want. Uh, for the next one, EM32 standard rotor. I am going to get this, I'm going to just attach it there for the moment, and then we are going to use our move tool again, and this is where it does get fiddly, because we want to line that up as best we can. Uh, hold down shift, bring this up, we're going to want to bring you up kind of like that. Uh, down a bit actually, because that will help, oh damn it down a bit actually because that will help with lining it up and just get this lined up as best that we can uh, yeah it's a definite off center bit there so let's bring you just across a tiny little bit uh, as close to pixel perfect as you can get it if it's something like that it's not gonna matter too much um, yeah, that's that's probably good enough. So then, the helicopter blades. Uh, these are also part of the Breaking Ground mods. Helicopter Type B, so we want a pair of these. Uh, switch symmetry mode by pressing R, then X to get that up. Uh, we're going to want snapping back on. A pair of those attached to there because they seem to insist on being attached first, so why stop them and a pair of those there. Starting to look a lot more helicopterish. Um, yeah, a couple more things we need to do. Uh, at the moment we don't have any fuel because the fuel's just going to drag it off center. So what I did was I got a couple of the Mark Zero fuel tanks. Here they are. Okay. So we are going to want, um, first of all, we're going to grab one of those, make sure our center of mass overlay is on, and do a similar thing. Now, actually, before we do that, we're going to want to get this sorted. Another thing I put on, it's entirely, entirely aesthetic. I put on a pair of these intakes. Um, 
rotated them around to sort of 45 degrees and then we'll uh, we'll tweak scale those down yeah and then on the back I put a pair of these again we're going to tweak scale that down to the 0.625 and then if we get this um, now the fuel tank is where the stuff's going to drain from that's the thing that's going to shift the center of mass around so we want potentially shift the center of mass around which we don't want it to do so we need to get this fuel tank again kind of lined up as best we can with that center of mass like that uh, something similar on the uh, something similar on the bottom because we are going to need um, I think I put it somewhere like that originally because we are going to want something to hold some oxidizer um, for our, um, uh, our fuel cells uh, I think I just used this nose cone here and again I just tweak scaled that down and another one of those on the back. Did I use a different part? I can't remember. Well, today we're going for the tweak scaled for the tweak scaled nose cones. And once again, we uh, try to move you back until you line up with that. Uh, pain in the backside trying to do this but it should because you've got to sort of try and make sure you've got the perspective correct so you're not putting everything I think that that looks pretty good there and then just for a little bit of aesthetics we're just going to clip this into the fuselage and do something similar here Okay, looks good. Uh, that is liquid fuel. This, we're going to want to change that to oxidizer. Okay, I think we're almost done with actually having uh, a working working helicopter. Now comes the tricky bit of setting up the engines and the rotor blades so it will actually fly as we need it to. So let's do some basic engine configuration. Uh, let's start with here. Now, these two craft will produce uh, different amounts of power. I mean, um, quite significantly different amounts of power. If you see that we've got 550 and 70 kilonewtons. I did jot down what I used on the Hawk Moth. We're gonna move this down to, I think we did 12 and then, we can take this down, I think, to 94. That gives us an approximate match. We don't need an exact match. Um, one thing we will need to do is the top one, the bottom one will rotate clockwise, the top one will rotate counterclockwise or anti-clockwise if you prefer the British take on things. And we are going to change these helicopter blades to the counterclockwise variety. Now, why do I not need these uh, power here to match? Because we're going to be doing a variable pitch propeller. Now, with a variable pitch propeller, like basically all but the all but the uh, the, the most cheap and cheerful propeller uh, motors are going to be variable pitch propellers, which means that um, the propeller keeps going round at the same rate, and the pitch of the uh, the pitch of the propeller blades themselves alters. Uh, to give you uh, the various amounts of thrust you need, or in this case, uh, lift. And of course, the engine will uh, will just output more power to compensate. Now, these will output enough power once these are going up to their um, desired RPM, which we are going to set at 250. So we don't really need to worry about the power output of these things. We just need to start thinking about how we are going to... Um, how we're going to configure these blades here.
So let's go into action groups. Actually, before we do that, I just want to check locked, no, locked, no. OK. Yes. Oh, and something I forgot to mention. Yes, the reason we're using fuel and oxidizer, the fuel, this is a fuel powered uh, engine. This is electrical, uh, electrically powered. So the fuel here, the 50 units of fuel will power this engine. And some of that fuel and the oxidizer will power the fuel cells because this top motor here is electrical. Anyway, yes, moving onwards to the action groups. We want to tie a couple of things to um, to the main throttle. First of all, we want uh, the torque limit of this air, the uh, well, both of the motors. Uh, and this will mean that as we throttle up, that will increase the power output of these two engines. By the time the um, the propellers get the propeller blades get to a positive angle of attack, they'll be outputting more than enough power to actually um, uh, to actually uh, counter for that. Uh, now we also want to tie the deploy angle of these blades to the. Um, to the main throttle as well and we want to deploy these to start with. I'll sort of explain what I'm doing here as we as we take it for a test flight. Uh, I'm also going to get uh, custom 10. I am going to set that for the braking of the main engines. Okay so I think to more thoroughly explain exactly what I've done there and how this thing is flying exactly. I think we're going to need to take this outside and give it a bit of a test flight. Here we are on the runway then. Uh, Ion Kerman is our pilot for today and you can see that at the moment these uh, both these pairs of helicopter blades have got quite a significant negative angle of attack on them. If I just throttle up a bit you'll see they try to move a bit but the brakes are on so they can't move too far but as I increase the throttle the angle of attack on these blades changes and then goes uh, goes positive, goes quite steeply positive by the time we get to uh, to full throttle. I just want to bring that back down a little bit. I'm going to release the brakes on the um, on the engines. Now let's start throttling up a bit. I did say release the brakes. Obviously, didn't press that firmly enough. Uh, what can we see? We can see the RPM is uh, just climbing there, as is the torque limit. So we need to get that up to 250. So it's the same for both the top and bottom motors. There we go. And by this point, it's got it's producing more than enough torque, producing more than enough power to keep those going, uh, even when we start to produce lift. And as we start getting the throttle just above the halfway mark, we should start to generate some positive lift. And hopefully, this thing should take off. There we go. And that's all there is to it. Yep, the engines will keep these going around at the same rate. We just need to change the pitch on the propeller blades um, to actually alter the amount of lift we're producing. And then, like any helicopter, let's, let's take in the, uh, take in the landing gear, uh, just because why not? So let's tilt it forward. That should start giving us some, um, I suppose, forward lift? Ah, uh, whatever, yeah, we'll start moving. <laughs> start moving the helicopter forward. I think there's a slight tilt to the right here. So we can see that uh, the prograde vector is moving off slightly to the right, and now it's moving off slightly to the left. And yeah, we have a working helicopter. Uh, it's a little more uh, power just to keep us going forward. That prograde vector was dipping below the horizon there. And because we have some weapons, let's just take this out for a quick, uh, a quick test fire. Okay, nice. Uh, just a uh, just a couple more things to do before we do actually have ourselves a fully fledged attack helicopter. So there's a couple more tweaks I want to make to this thing. Uh, first of all, I just want to go back to the action groups. Now, we didn't actually have the fuel cells on for that flight, and if we do that, it's going to run out of electricity uh, pretty quickly. So I want to make another action group, which is going to toggle these fuel cells. We'll make that uh, nine, just so uh, our top motor, our electrical motor, doesn't run out of power. Also, if you want to keep this thing 
um, sort of going along at a fair old speed, uh, then this this sort of um, horizontal stabilizer is going to sort of try and drag the uh, drag the tail down, try and get you into level flight and spoil that. So what I uh, have done previously is just take this and put a 10 degree angle of attack on it. And that means that you put the nose down to about 10 degrees. That should act to keep it there. And you can get a nice little cruising speed going. What else do we need? Yes, we need some weaponry. Uh, get rid of that. Turn you over again. We need some weaponry on these uh, little pylons here. So I am going to come across to here. We'll want uh, a couple of missile rails, first of all. Uh, one here, let's make sure we've got um, make sure we've got symmetry on. Let's use the move tool just to make sure this is lined up with our center of mass. Again, having to sort of try and judge for the perspective. I think it's pretty good though. Oops a daisy. Let's do that again. I think around about there. Yeah, and then that should mean that if that's lined up, then similarly, is that going to be lined up? I think uh, do, 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 probably more like that, actually. Yeah, it's a bit finickety just trying to get all the cent the center of mass exactly going through the uh, through the um, the uh, the motor axis. Um, but it will help the aircraft fly much better in the long run. What else did I want to put on here? Uh, I also had a couple of rocket pods, although with all the mods, this is going to be a pain in the backside to find. There we go, Hydra 70 rocket pod. I knew it was in there somewhere. Uh, we are just going to reorientate you and try and get you uh, to stick there if you can. You're not going to play ball? Okay. Oh, for goodness sake. Okay. We want you about there then. And once again, will you behave? About there then. And again, we're going to see if we can center that as best we can. Uh, so move you like that and in fact I've got that round the wrong way haven't I easily solved turn on angle snapping first though and yeah and then with this aligned we should just need to go and find ourselves some hellfires uh, do, 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 do. one there one there, one, oh, no, one there. Hold down the Alt key to make a copy. Press the Q key to rotate it like that and snap you on there. And I think we're done. I think we have made ourselves a, uh, a decent little replica. Why is the center of mass moving around there? Okay. I think we have made ourselves a decent little replica of my Hawk Moth. I think we have made ourselves a decent attack helicopter. So there we go then, a simple attack helicopter for you to recreate if you wish, or just take anything you like from what I've discussed and uh, use it as you will uh, in your own creations. Uh, I've probably missed something or underemphasized something, so if you want any clarifications, please by all means uh, leave them in the comments and I will do my best to answer those. But. That will be all we have time for today. There was something else I wanted to try and squeeze in, but <laughs> I didn't realise how long this video was going to be, so we'll just we'll have to leave that uh, for another day. I hope you found it useful. I hope you found it informative. Uh, if you have enjoyed today's videos, please consider liking, subscribing, uh, following me on Twitter, getting involved with the Discord, great uh, KSP and BD Army community, and more besides on there. There are also uh, PayPal and Patreon links. That's all in the description if you want to help support the channel. I will be back soon with some more BD Armory. Until then, thanks for watching. Take care, and I'll see you next time.